Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Deepwater Horizon is a bone-rattling, horrifying, and deeply moving disaster movie that takes you right inside the catastrophic explosion on the oil rig of the same name off the Louisiana coast in 2010. Easily the best film Peter Berg has ever directed, the movie takes the time to introduce you to the characters and explain to you what led to the disaster, yes, even sometimes with subtitles on the screen. You would think this might be a little too pandering to the audience, but I personally found it to be extremely helpful. In fact, the best aspect of the film has got to be its realism. The setting, the lingo, the protocols, even down to the armpit stains on some of the characters' costumes. Everything combines to give you the feeling that you are really there. Even if, as lay people, we don't exactly know what's going on at all times. Not to worry though, you grasp it pretty quickly, and like I mentioned earlier, even when you don't, a character or even a helpful little title card will gladly explain it to you before the story resumes. Mark Wahlberg and Kurt Russell lead an impressive cast as two of the senior drillers on the rig before some company men come aboard to mess everything up. They're led by John Malkovich, who is about as slimy as he's ever been here, which is really saying something. Now, for the majority of this movie, I found myself thinking, okay, this is so Hollywood, they're gonna demonize the company men as the greedy guys, like the dude in Titanic, pushing everybody to go faster, cut corners, etc. But lo and behold, you find out just prior to the credits just how culpable these sleazebags were, and just how heroic the drillers were, not just by sacrificing themselves to save their fellow men, but by letting these weenies onto the lifeboats without throttling them to death. Now, I mentioned earlier that the movie takes its time introducing the characters and their situation, but that doesn't mean at all that the story is slow. In fact, the complete immersion into the culture of these drillers by following them around the rig, through the mess halls, into the drill room, all while they have jargon-filled conversations with each other, with the matter-of-factness of people who do this for a living all day long, well, it's captivating. So much is done here with looks, not words, just tone of voice. Kurt Russell in particular, by the way, I just love the way his character pronounces the word cement as cement. He uses so much subtlety to convey which things annoy him, which things bother him, and which things absolutely terrify him. Off of his reactions, you can tell when he sees things that the company men suggest that aren't worth arguing about, where he feels like he can give a little, and where he absolutely needs to put his foot down. Knowing what we know about how this particular day will end up, it's riveting to watch. Now you get these sort of details in a movie like Titanic 2, but in much less subtle fashion. Look, I'm gonna compare this one to Titanic again because it holds up, but keep in mind, Titanic was telling multiple stories, had a big love story, a big Celine Dion song, it was a whole cinematic thing. In Deepwater Horizon, you immerse yourself into the rig and its personnel, and then tragedy strikes quickly and brutally. And when it did, I checked my watch, and there was only about 30 minutes of movie left. That means that the survival aspect of it, the action or thriller elements, if you will, I know it feels weird to use the word thriller in a story about real people who died at work, but there you go. There's just not that much action in terms of screen time. What there is in abundance is heart and perspective. We live with these characters for a time, grow to love or loathe them, and then watch them get severely rocked in a rush of noise, chaos, and split-second decisions made with the highest of stakes. I've gotta say, I got a little choked up near the end of this film, even after the scene moves away from the fiery destruction of the Deepwater Horizon and back onto land where the survivors must cope with how close they came to death just by showing up to work. That is a credit to the performances, not just by Wahlberg and Russell, but also by Kate Hudson, who is superb as Wahlberg's wife, in addition to dozens of great character actors inhabiting their blue-collar roles perfectly. I award Deepwater Horizon an extra-large bag of popcorn. It's a sure-handed, immersive film by a confident and capable filmmaker telling a devastating story of unconscionable hubris, uncommon bravery, with restraint and respect for the real people involved. Well, that does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more, and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and also by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Deepwater Horizon in the comments as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. And why are we not testing the cement?